Hello everyone. Now we will see the section modulus. What is the section modulus? And for different section, how to find out its section modulus? Or we are going to remember the formula for the different sections. It is the ratio of the moment of inertia of that section about the neutral axis to the distance of the outermost layer. Mathematically, we are denoting it by letter Z, and that Z is equal to what it is I upon Y. I is what it is a moment of inertia. I is the moment of inertia from the neutral axis, and distance from the outermost layer is what Y max, so maximum layer. Suppose if I consider one of the uh, rectangular section, so if I find here the neutral axis, right? So moment of inertia of I. Of this section b d cube by 12, and from this, if it is the d and this is b, so the y, this is the y from this neutral axis to outermost layer, so that is the d by 2. So, this ratio i upon y we can call it as a section modulus. Its unit is what mm cube or meter cube because i is having mm raised to 4 and y is mm, so mm and uh, raised to 4 it cancels, so you will get the mm cube. By using the bending stress equation, which already oh, we are aware about that, m by i is equal to sigma upon y, right? So, therefore, if you rearrange this, sigma max is equal to, or m, when m is equal to sigma max, so this I will take i towards the right hand side, i upon y. And as per the definition, this i upon y, what it is? The moment of inertia divided by the outermost layer. So that is what the section modulus you can say. So, I will replace this i upon y max as a z. So, therefore, m is equal to sigma max into z. Now, uh, I will see uh, for the rectangular section. So, this is the rectangular section having b as a width and d as a depth. So, here you will get the neutral axis. So, the from neutral axis to outermost layer that you will get d by 2 and again from the bottom the d by 2 outermost layer. We know that moment of inertia of this section is what b d cube by 12. So, this we are already aware and just I had said that the outermost layer distance from the neutral axis it is d by 2. And if you want to calculate the section modulus z is equal to d the ratio of i upon y max. So, i is b d cube by 12 and y max is d by 2. So, this 2 it will get cancelled. So, here you will get the 6 and this is d and here you will get square. So, b d square by 6. So, this is the section modulus for this rectangular section we will get. Now, for the hollow rectangular section, so outer uh, it is B, uh, depth it is capital D, inner that is B and the inner depth it is small d and here is the neutral axis. So, from this neutral axis to outermost layer distance that is uh, d by 2 and again from the bottom side d by 2. Now, what is the moment of inertia for this hollow rectangular section? That is the B D cube by 12, capital B, capital D cube by 12. But as this is a hollow, this we have to remove. So, small b d, small d cube divided by 12. So, you will get B D cube by 12 minus B D cube by 12. So, 1 upon 12 I will take common. So, capital B D cube minus small B D cube we will get. So, this is the uh, moment of inertia. And from this neutral axis to outermost layer distance, that is the capital D by 2. So now, if you put, then you will get the section modulus I upon Y. So, this is the I and divided by 2. So, this 2, uh, here you will get the uh, 6. So, 6 D you will get and B D cube capital minus small B D cube. So, in this way, we can calculate the section modulus for this uh, hollow rectangular section. Now, the next section that is the solid uh, circular section uh, which is having the diameter d and uh, here we will consider the neutral, uh, we will get the neutral axis here at the center. So, from this neutral axis to outermost layer here it is uh, d by 2, again uh, at the bottom also we will get the d by 2. Now, the moment of inertia for this solid circular section is pi by 64 small uh, d raised to 4 and uh, the uh, y max that is outermost layer distance it is uh, d by 2. So, it may be a small uh, d by 2, right. 
then if i take ratio of this uh, so this is again small d so this will get 2 and this is 32 and d it will get cancelled so this is 4 and 3 so pi by 32 d cube so this is what the section modulus for the solid circular section you will get now we will see for the hollow circular section the outer diameter capital D, inner diameter small d and uh, here we will get the neutral axis. So from this neutral axis to outermost layer distance that is capital D by 2. Now again I uh, moment of inertia of this hollow section pi by 64, outer diameter is to 4 minus inner diameter is to 4. And again the y it is uh, capital D by 2. If we put here then you will get I upon y max that is a section modulus. So, pi by 64 capital D raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 divided by capital D by 2. So, this 2 uh, here you will get the 32. So, pi by 32 and capital D raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 divided by this capital D. Now, for uh, symmetric I section or the C section, for this how to find out. So, this is what the symmetric I section. So, this is the uh, B width uh, of the upper flange and uh, this is the web uh, b is the width and d is the depth and this capital d is the total depth of this i section uh, as this is the symmetric so at the center we will get the neutral axis so from this neutral axis to outermost layer capital d by 2 will get so again simi uh, similarly c section is similar to the i section so instead of the center this web it is toward the left hand side then that can out into the c section so again dimension b uh, capital B top flange and uh, the uh, web it is small uh, b width and depth it is small d and this is capital D. Now how to find out this? So this I is equal to BD cube by 12 means what we are doing we are considering uh, this as a rectangular first. All right and for this rectangular we know BD cube by 12 but this portion it is removed so that we have to remove. So what is this B will get capital B minus b means this and this you will get so this is the width and depth is what d d cube so b d cube this hollow which we removed that we are taking divided by 12 so this is what the uh, moment of inertia of this i again similar this b d cube by 12 so this we are considering as a solid and the hollow what it is capital b minus small b so this b and this is d so this we are removing as this is symmetric about this x axis so uh, I I will get for this whether it is I section or it is a C section. Now what is the Y? It is uh, the distance from neutral axis to the outermost layer. So here again in case of the I section or even in case of the C section it is capital uh, D by 2. Uh, so here just we rearrange this and Y max D by 2. So section modulus Z is equal to I upon Y. We will put this value. Uh, then we will get uh, BD cube minus capital B minus small b this is b and small uh, d cube divided by 6 capital D. So in this way we can find out this the section modulus for this different uh, that is the uh, circular solid, circular hollow, uh, rectangular solid, rectangular hollow or even uh, I section or the C section in this way we can find out that is the section modulus. Uh, few formulae uh, we need uh, for uh, finding out the maximum bending moment right so uh, it depends upon the types of the beam and here are the few standard cases uh, that we will see what is the maximum bending moment the first one that is the simply supported beam with the point load at the midpoint uh, of this total beam ab so here uh, we will get the maximum bending moment at the mid span so that maximum bending moment value uh, we have to remember this uh, wl by 4 uh, even uh, if you can calculate by solving this shear force and bending one diagram also we will get but it takes somewhat time so for that we are remembering this uh, m max is equal to wl by 4 for the simply supported beam and the point load at the mid span for the second again it is a simply supported beam but here it is the uniformly distributed load, load over entire span of the ab in this case also uh, we get the maximum bending moment at this center and that value of maximum bending moment is uh, w l square by 8 that uh, w is what small w per unit length that is the load it is there so but here in case of that is the capital w that is the point load but this small w is what per unit length load and this capital is total length of the uh, beam 
Now the third one uh, that is the cantilever beam and the point load at the free end and this is having the length L of the beam. In that case uh, we get the maximum bending moment uh, diagram uh, if you uh, recall uh, we had drawn bending moment like uh, diagram like this and uh, we will get like this. So somewhere here at the fix uh, whatever the fixed end is there here we will get the maximum bending moment. So that is it occurs at the fixed point. And that maximum bending moment value is what W into L. So W is the point load and this length. So here the anti-clockwise moment which we will get that is the maximum bending moment that is the value W L in case of the cantilever. And the fourth case the cantilever uh, beam uh, but instead of this point load uh, here we are applying the uniformly distributed load. And that load is per unit length and if you want to calculate the total load then small W into L will get the total load. Here again as this is a cantilever uh, the maximum bending moment again here you will get at the uh, fixed end uh, only. So here uh, the maximum bending moment and that maximum bending moment is a small w uh, l square divided by 2 and that small w is what per unit uh, length that is the weight. So in this way these are the four uh, standard case which uh, we have to recall so that directly we can calculate the maximum bending moment. Okay. Thank you.